Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening, good evening, good evening. My name is John Shaquille Poitier Jr. And welcome back to my podcast, Darling, I'm Depressed Again. Don't tell my mother. Where we discuss mental health in the youth, the adolescents, the teenagers, the primary schoolers, high schoolers, tertiary school, college, university level, trade school, regular school, no school. Listen, once you are a human being, once you are breathing, we have something for you. Now, each episode, we have a certain word that ties everything together, something that gives the episode a certain feel, if you will. And the word for this episode is avoidance. The word of the episode is avoidance. All right, now let's get into it. So in case you couldn't tell by the title of the episode, I am going to be mentioning a very traumatic incident that happened in, in the Bahamas. Now, if you're from the Bahamas, if you're from Grand Bahama or Abaco, or just had any dealings with Hurricane Dorian in general, I'm just giving you a trigger warning just in case before we get into it, because it's going to be, you know, I'm going to discuss that and I just don't want to blindside anybody. All right. Okay, let's go. So Hurricane Dorian wasn't like any other storm that we'd ever experienced in on Grand Bahama. It wasn't like any other storm that we'd ever experienced period. And let me tell you all, so we heard about it and we were just like, okay, you know, another hurricane coming. Me and my daddy, we brought up the windows, but my, my daddy brought up the windows. I had him the nails. Uh, I, you know, I, I try bam, bam, bam it in. No, I, I do my little thing. One, two, my little one, two with the hammer. Uh, me and my mother went food shopping. We got the food. We got the canned goods. We got the gas for the little gas stove, the portable gas stove that we have. We went out and about looking for things, you know, just looking for things that would help us through this hurricane because we've been through hurricanes before. It's never been such a thing whereas we had to leave the house or, you know, we had to evacuate. It's never been that serious for us until Hurricane Dorian. I remember the day so vividly. We were just sitting down inside the house. The hurricane had begun. It was just me, my mother, and my father. My two sisters were in Nassau at that point in time with my niece. Uh, my aunt had passed earlier on in the year. And, you know, we was just like, okay, you know, at least we, we're here. We're in the house. And I just remember something was in, like, I had been through a hurricane before, but this was, like, really, really, really strong. Like, this was a different type of, the winds were, like, it was like a rhinoceros was just hitting the side of the house. Like an elephant was just bombing on my roof, like bow, 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 bow. Like it was every single sound, every single word, every single thing was just amplified a million fold, and I could hear it echoing outside the house. I was terrified. But you know, I'm in my house, so I'm safe. My house is my safe space. Nothing can get in. And I'm not going out. So we'll be fine. We'll be fine, right? I remember my neighbor hearing someone knock on the door. Because prior to that, we had to bring in two people because, you know, they were walking along the road and their area had gotten a little flooded out. So we welcomed them to into our house. One of the ladies slipped and fell on the porch, so she had a little back pain. And we just had them inside because, you know, the water. I remember our neighbor across the street, she ran, she running, she running, she running, she running. She wanted to say, y'all, she knocked on the door, bam, 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 bam. We trying to figure out what's going on. Say, y'all, water coming, water coming, water coming. I say, water coming? What you mean water coming? Listen, the area that we live in, we had never seen flooding before. You would never, ever see flooding. Like, you would have never thought you would see flooding in the area that we live in. You would have never seen that. That's not a typical thing. Flooding in the area we live in? Please. Now, you might see it in, like, another area, in, like, one of the lower areas, but we we didn't live in, like, a low area. We lived on a place that was very level, very, you know, in a little above level. So we thought we were fine. So imagine my surprise. We had our neighbors say, water coming. We look around or we look out the door. 
all we seeing is all our neighbors over yonder, all their backyard is ocean. I say pause. I look in, my neighbor truck already gone, they gone speeding down the road. Their truck already gone speeding down the road. Keep in mind, the road flooded out, so the truck gets stalled out. But they already gone speeding down the road. I say, oh. So now it's like, okay, I, I begin to panic because we never had to go through this before. We never had to do this before. Like, this is a completely new experience for me. Like, I never, I never had to go through this before. And then the water started getting closer. And the water started getting closer. And the water started getting closer. And it started inching up the yard. And first it was at the driveway. Then it crawled up to the cars. And then it reached the front porch. And then it reached the door. And I see my mummy. My mummy trying to sweep the water away, sweep the water away, sweep the water away. And I'm just thinking, mummy, water coming inside the house. Mummy, water coming inside the house. What do we do? What do we do? I begin to panic. My daddy, he already get a, a, a catch of what's going on. He's seeing the water starting to rise. He's seeing what's going on. He's saying, yo, listen, we can't stay here. We got to go. We got to go? What you mean we got to go? Go where? Where I need to go in this storm happening out there? That's me in my head. Keep in mind, I wouldn't say it to my daddy because obviously that's my daddy. He know what's going on. I'm obviously going to listen to him because I know hurricanes. I know hurricane watchmen. I don't know what's going on. But he said we had to go, so we go. So I get my backpack and I put my valuables inside of it. I put my PS4. And yeah, that was it. I put my PS4 in my backpack. On a book, I think. Keep in mind, I was much younger back then. My thought process was, I put the photo albums and the passports and the pictures, I put those things high up. It was very stupid of me to do. I know. It was a very idiotic thing to do. I put those things high up on the shelves. I put my PS4 on my head. Because, let, let me tell you all, it took me like years to get a PS4 at that point. Like, they didn't want to get me one. So, it was like, if I lose this PS4, I'm not going to get another one. So you best believe I will be walking with my PS4 through Hurricane Dorian. Because if I lose that, y'all know we only get me another one. So me, my mommy, my daddy, and my PS4 walk out the house with the people, with the strangers, and we began walking through the waters, right? My PS4, Chris, on top of my head now, like, y'all listen, like that PS4, that, that, that bag tied up on my back, like that strap, strap tight to my back. PS4, it gone from my back, and then I had to alternate it to my head when we started getting to the high areas because the water started to rise. So, we're walking. Now, keep in mind, it's storming around us. The water getting higher and higher. I have to keep, like I said, I had to alternate to my head. I had to put my PS4 on my head. I had to put the bag on my head, like, pull it flat on my head because we starting, the water starting to get higher. It's starting to get a little concerning. And then, all at once, everything just went crazy. The water getting to my chest level. The water, uh, my like the water started rising. My daddy, like once I see it hitting my daddy waist, I know something. Mean because my daddy like tall, this like this six foot plus dude, this six foot plus boy. Like once I see that water start getting to his waist, that I was like, oh god! And I start calling on Jehovah. Listen, I never prayed so loudly in my life. I said, Jehovah, son, I said, Father God, I call upon you. Father God, I know you can bring me out of this. Father God, I know I'm not meant to die like this. Father God, I know you can do this. Father God, listen, I prayed the entire time we walked because we were getting to a shelter, a church that was only supposed to be a very short walk for us. It took us a very long time to get there, an extremely long time to get to the church. And I began to pray so with so much conviction and so much, listen, I never prayed so loudly, but I believe it worked because eventually we got to an area, a little, well, it's supposed to be a street, but by, not, by that time, me and the Great Bahama Bank. Cheap as you say, we in the Atlantic Ocean. We in the middle of the street. Our cousins are helping people. They swim and helping people to, you know, get the safety of the shelter. 
I always say, okay, thank you, Jesus. We we almost there. I see the shelter right there. I reaching out to it. I reaching out to it. We get to the shelter. We get inside the area, and we sit down. And I have my phone with me because I had my phone. I realize now also that I took you no, know, I took my technology stuff. I'll admit it. I took the tech. I'm te- I was I, I I wasn't thinking with a clear head. Please for, forgive me. Please lose me. I common sense would tell me now leave the PS4. Well, PS5. Leave the con- leave the console. Carry the phone, of course. Get your passport. You just get the important things. But the PS4 on the phone was the, was the important thing at the time. Uh, my sister, my sisters were so concerned because they hadn't heard from us. And I didn't know what to do. My sisters called, and I was just so flustered. I was so overwhelmed with emotion. My mommy asked him to call my call my sisters. I know I have the phone, but it's just like it's too much. It was she was in my air about it. I couldn't do it. I was like, Mommy, please, not now, not now, please, not now, please, not now. Like, really, not now. She would talk to my sisters. I just, it was every, it was so much. We get on the sister, my phone, with my sisters. I bust out crying. I was like, Everything gone. That was my first realization. Everything gone. And let me explain it to you. I'm not a materialistic person, right? But to break it down for you, my house has always been my safe haven. My room has always been my safe haven. This is the place where I put the books that I always collected. I used to have books piled against the wall in my room. I used to have bookshelves loaded with books. I I love books. I love reading. I love knowledge. I My room was my safe haven. And... When the hurricane came, it washed it out away. So my sense of safety and my sense of peace and individuality, it felt like that had been washed away by Hurricane Dory. And so I broke down on the phone with my sisters and I say, y'all, everything gone. Because that's what it seemed like to me. It seemed like everything was gone. However. I did have the greatest gift, which was that me and my parents survived. We survived. Not everyone else can say that, unfortunately. A lot of people lost things that mattered a lot more than books. Things that mattered a lot more than a room. They lost their family members. They lost their sons, their daughters, their mothers, their sisters, their brothers, their uncles, their aunties, their grammies. They they lost so much they lost their peace their love their joy their hope their faith a lot of people lost their faith a lot of people lost their sense of self the hurricane came and took that away the hurricane came and took that away eventually after moving around and you know Going up in the shelter, we had to move to another part of the church because water started coming in where we were at. And we had to go sit upstairs because it became a safety issue. And we were all clustered together. And we could hear outside the windows the water rushing, rushing and just pounding against the walls of the church. And I just thought, God, please don't let me die. Please don't let me die. Then, the next day, the sun came out. The sun came out. Or rather, the light came out because the sun was still, you still couldn't see it behind, you know, the cloudiness, but it came out. And the waters receded a bit. And around midday, me and my father began to walk home. Now, my skin had developed this kind of itchiness over it and I had a scratch on me that was like ugh. but we survived we made it we are okay well as okay as we can be but we okay we get to the house my daddy tried to get me some food I I couldn't I really couldn't eat it because it was just 
I was I didn't realize how empty I was. I'm not, I'm not talking about hungry. I wasn't realize how empty I was emotionally and physically until I got to the house. I opened the door and all the water came pouring out. And after that, an airline was giving away tickets a few days after that to get off island. So there was a lot of chaos with that because my parents were trying to get me a ticket to get off the island because there wasn't any like way to do it. People were just going and singing. Everything was just, everything was going wrong. And yeah. So my parents sent me to live with my sister in Nassau. And while I was there, the thing that I fixated, fixated most on was I have my PS4, right? I have my PS4. That's okay. That survived. Yeah, I went through Hurricane Dorian. Yeah, it was so traumatic. And yeah, we almost died. But at least I got my PS4, though. <laughs> I have my PS4. But I got my PS4, so it's okay. And... I didn't realize how messed up I was about it until my sister asked me if I was okay. And I told her that I wasn't. Because for a little while, it was like I could only see water around me. I could only see the waters of Hurricane Dorian around me. And I tried my best to avoid the way that I felt. I tried my best to avoid having any feelings or any emotions about what I was going through at all because it hurt me so much to have experienced that and to have watched people experience what they experienced. I can't even imagine what some of the people who lost people so close to them, how they felt. I can't imagine. But it messed, for me, it messed me up mentally and I did my best to try to avoid that. I did my best to try to be the same person, the same JJ, the same laughing JJ, the same JJ that does all the things that he does, that always tries to do his best and be his best and act his best. I tried to pretend as if I wasn't traumatized at all. Because... Why would I be traumatized? It's not like I died. It's not like someone close to me died. It's not like something happened that would have, you know, it's not like I was still in the water. I'm out of the water. I'm okay. I'm no longer in the water. I am safe. So why didn't I feel safe? I'm okay. So why didn't I feel okay? I'm in a dry home. So why does it feel like everywhere I look, there's water, there's a hurricane around the corner? And I realized what I did is I tried to use the humor of me having my PS4 during Hurricane Dorian to gloss over the fact that Hurricane Dorian traumatized the hell out of me. Being in a moment where you have to pray not to die. Oh, God. Being in a moment where you have to pray not to die. Where you are fearful for the lives of your parents, of your other family members who live on the island, of the people that you know and love. Being in a moment like that. It was something that I wanted desperately to forget. I wanted to forget that so badly. It's it's insane. I did not want to remember that existed. I didn't. I did not want to remember the looks on my parents' faces. I didn't want to remember the sound of my mommy voice when she was worried about what was going to happen. I didn't want to remember the fair on my neighbor face when she was saying water coming water coming i didn't want to remember any of it i just i was praying and hoping and wishing that i could forget everything that happened and i could not i could not 
No matter how hard I tried, no matter what I did, no matter how much I threw myself into schoolwork, no matter how much I threw myself into exercising and being the perfect student and being the perfect brother and the perfect son and the perfect this and the perfect that, I could not forget the fact that Hurricane Dorian happened. I could not forget it. I still have the scar on my wrist from where something had cut me. My skin still had that weird patchy thing going on. I didn't know what was going on. And to make matters worse, I didn't want anyone to know that I felt so terribly. Because the second that people know how I feel, it becomes more real. The second that people are aware of how these things impacted me and how hurt I am and how damaged I am and how afraid and traumatized and scared I am, the moment they know that, it becomes real. It's like that song uh, with that Renee rapper. If y'all may not know who Renee Rapp is, man. She have this song called In the Kitchen and she is like, I won't delete the videos because it's real when everyone knows. Well, I didn't let people know how I was feeling because it's real when everyone knows. My trauma and my fear, it became real when everyone knew. It became real when people knew that I was scared of the rain. That I didn't want to go near the ocean. I was terrified of the rain. The first time it rained after Dorian, I was scared. Like, I was basically pissing my bonds. I was terrified. Because I didn't know. I didn't, I just didn't know what to do. And I avoided. Because that was the easy thing to do. Why would I confront my feelings? Why would I confront my feelings? Listen, I'm a person. If it's coming to me and my feelings, I would avoid it back in the past. I would avoid it if I could. I love, I used to love to avoid. Oh my gosh, listen. If avoiding was a cake, I would have been eating it. You could have your cake and eat it too, avoid it and eat it too. I would avoid all my problems, all my pain, all my issues, which is also why I went through what I went through in school. I avoided it. It's why I went through what I went through in some parts of my life. I avoided it because why would I pay attention to it? It's hurting to me. It's hurting me. So if I ignore it, if I push it away, then we can just pretend that it doesn't exist. And I'll be fine. Because if I can't see it, if I can't hear it, if I can't touch it, if it can't touch me, then it's okay. It's a-okay with me. It's okay. But at some point, I just couldn't avoid it anymore. At some point, it became so much that I became overwhelmed. At some point, I just literally couldn't do it anymore. Because I was putting all of these okays, all of these I'm fines, all of these I'm great, all of these I'm wonderful, all of these I'm just... I'm not traumatized at all. I was putting all of these words on top of a broken mind. And they were just slipping through the cracks, slipping through the cracks. And the more that I added, the more pressure I added to myself to pretend as if everything was okay, to pretend as if everything was fine. I added more pressure to myself each time I avoided the issue because I wasn't bold enough. I didn't want to be strong enough to confront what happened, to confront this gigantic incident in my life. Even when I did not help myself, I was pretending like I didn't do that. I mean, now, to be fair, who would claim that they not help themselves? Let's be for real. But it took me years to talk about it. I just wanted to shove the I'm okay is over it and that's okay. I used the okay is as a blanket. I used the I'm fine as a blanket. As an excuse not to confront my trauma. That's my shield. And if that's guarding me, if that's protecting me, then everything's everything's 
okay. But that shield begins to chip away. The more time that you use it, it begins to chip and fall away and break into pieces. And that's what mine was doing until eventually I just couldn't hold it anymore. And it's even a thing of sometimes I use dark humor. I use humor to deflect from the fact that I feel sad about something. I use I would use humor to do that. For example, my grandmother passed when I was very, very young. Well, this isn't actually humorous, but well, this isn't humorous, but I'm still, still gonna state this anyway. My grandmother passed when I was very young, very, very young. And it broke my heart in a way. And not for the reasons that you think, because we didn't, I didn't know her that well. I, like I said, I was very young. But I would be at school and I would see my classmates. They have Grammys and they have granddaddies. And I would be at church and I see, you know, the little children, they have granddaddies and they have Grammys and they have, they have these things. They have those people for them. And I wanted that so badly. And it felt like mine was taken away. So to avoid that, I, I, when someone, if someone asked me, I'd just be like, my Grammy dead. Like, my Grammy dead. She's dead. She's dead. <laughs> like, you know what I was saying? She's dead. And people for a while thought, oh, you know, we just so nonchalant about it. No. That screwed me up immensely. The fact that she is dead, the fact that she died, it screwed me up immense, immensely, immensely, because I wanted to have that relationship with her so badly. And I know that she was a wonderful person because I hear my daddy talk about it. I hear my all the sisters talk about her. I hear my cousins talk about her. And I know that she was this wonderful, amazing person. That she was this, you know, this hard rock that, you know, she don't take nothing. That she don't give nothing. And this woman of God. But I wish I could have learned that for myself. And the fact that I never got to. It broke me. It broke my heart. So I avoided it. I avoided talking about how I felt about it for years. For years, I would not talk about how I felt about it. I would not. I would absolutely not talk about it. You asked about my Grammy? Oh, she dead. Boom. Leave that that. She dead. She is dead. I'm not going to talk about how I feel about it. Why would I do that? Because that makes it real. If I admit to the fact that I'm crying for a person that I never truly knew, even down to my grandfathers. I never knew either of my grandfathers. My, my paternal granddaddy, he died years, decades before I was born or my older sisters was born. Same thing for my maternal granddaddy. How can I explain to somebody that I feel sad because I over a person I never know? How can I do that? So I use my document and my granddaddy dead. My granddaddy dead. He, he dead. I'll use that. Because how can I explain the fact that I wish so badly that I could have gotten to know these people. I wish that I could have gotten to love these people and cherish them in my heart the way that the people around me did. How do I even explain that? I can't. I cannot explain that to you. So I'll avoid it. I'll avoid it entirely. And that was my mistake. I thought that no one could relate, no one would understand me in any respect when it came to my grandparents, when it came to Hurricane Dorian. I thought that there is no one in the world that would understand what I was going through. And let me tell you all, that is so incorrect. That is so incorrect. There is nothing new under the sun. Yes, you might be going through something. Yes, you might be experiencing something. But I am telling you, do not avoid it. 
It's like a cavity. The more you avoid a cavity, the more it could grow. And the more it could grow, the more your mouth can stink. And the more your mouth can stink, the more people can move away from you. Ask about it. Ask about it. You ever try talking to someone face who have halitosis? No. You don't. It's the same thing for avoidance. The more you avoid something that you are, an issue that you are facing, the more that you avoid something that you are experiencing, the more that you avoid pain or trauma or hurt, the more that you avoid it, the more that that anger and that sadness and that irritation will fester inside of you until it becomes too much for you to contain. Avoidance talking about avoidance people we're talking about avoiding our issues avoiding the hurricane we're avoiding the hurricane because right now we might be going through something i don't know your life y'all don't know everything about my life i might be going i might be going through something right now and instead of processing it we avoid it In order to heal, you have to process. Healing cannot come through avoidance. It has to come through processing because that's the way that life works. That's the way that things happen. When you break a bone, when you hurt a muscle, when you get injured physically, your body has to go through a process of healing. Your cells have to divide. The nutrients have to be distributed. The things have to happen in order for you to be healed, in order for you to heal emotionally or mentally, you have to face what you have been avoiding head on. You have to face what you have hated and despised and wanted to bury for so long head on. You have to grab that thing by the jaw. You have to look it in its eye and you have to say, listen to me. Hey, hey, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I know. I know I've been avoiding you, but we can talk about this today. Because if you don't, who will? And I know that's something you all may hear me say on this podcast before. If you don't, who will? But it's the truth. If you don't, who will? You avoid your issues, you can be the only one who can initiate your healing. And let me tell you something. If you just continue to avoid, if you think you can live your life avoiding every single problem that you encounter, you are in for a rude awakening. The rudest awakening you ever find in your life, that's what you're in for. Because let me tell you, When you avoid, when you neglect your healing, the better person that you become is someone that you won't even recognize. You don't recognize who you become. You don't recognize the wicked person that you become. You don't recognize the hurt, damaged person that you see when you look in the mirror. I don't recognize that young man. Who that nigga is? I don't know who that nigga is. Who is that nigga? I don't know him. Why are he looking at me like that? Why his eyes so empty like that? Why he got tears running down his face? Why he look like he's so sad, but he's so mad at the world? Who that nigga is? I don't know him. Nigga, that's you. That's literally you. Because you avoided your issues. Because you avoided the process of healing. Because you avoided everything going on in your life. You decided not to be complete. Because when you avoid healing, you avoid completion. So now, you're an incomplete, emotionally and mentally unstable person walking through the world. Because you don't know how to process life. And I know it's much easier. Sounds much easier than it actually is. Like, I'm saying it with words, but trust me, it ain't that easy. And you all know that. It's not that easy to open up your mouth. It's not. I mean, me 
I personally, I know I have friends who just can't do it. They can't open up their mouth to speak to someone about their issue. But see, that's the thing. Not avoiding something doesn't mean that you have to go talking about your issue to someone else. You could journal. You could pray to God. I should say pray to God first. You could pray to God. You could journal. You could go break some plates, break some glasses. Do anything to get that anger out. Anything that won't hurt anyone else, of course. Or yourself. But do something to get that anger out. Boy, what? You know you got one old beat up car in the front of your yard. You go get one baseball bat, just bop, 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 bop. Get that bop. Hit it for me one time. Bop. Hit it for me two times. Bop, bop, bop. Just go and break that up. You know you got some old ugly plates that you get and you didn't want them in the first place, man. Take them plates, just smash them on the floor. Get that anger out. Get that hurt out. Stop avoiding the issue. We avoid our emotions and we make others pay the price for it. We avoid our emotions and we pay the price for it. Get it out. Get it out. Let it out. Let it flow. Let it go. You have to let it out. The longer you hold on to it, the more it's going to hold on to you. And the more you avoid it, the tighter it can hold on to you. It's like that clean your gal that just won't let you go. They won't let you go. But you got to, got to let it go. Because if you don't let it go, it ain't going to let you go. So you got to, got to, you got to let it go. You have to let it go. You have to let it go by ceasing to avoid avoiding. Avoid avoiding. If you're going to avoid of anything else, avoid avoiding the issue. Choose not to avoid the issue. Do that. And it requires a certain level of bravery. It's a very brave thing to do. And you're, and you're going to be scared. You're going to be terrified. You're going to be completely and utterly unsure of yourself. But you have to do it anyway. And when you do, when you stop avoiding, start healing, and start growing, you'll find that you've made it out of the hurricane, and you'll be okay. I think you'll be just okay. Well, that's it for this episode. My name is John Shaquille Poitier Jr., and this has been Darling, I'm Depressed Again. Don't tell my mother. Until next time.